Welcome to Ann Arbor, Michigan, the site of a top 20 showdown tonight on the Big Ten Network as 10th ranked and unbeaten Michigan puts their undefeated record on the line against 16th rated Minnesota. Alongside Stephen Bardo, I'm Kevin Kugler. And Stephen, we have a matchup to talk about tonight in the middle. We start with the youngster for Michigan, Hunter Dickinson. Yeah, we say youngster, but he doesn't play like one, Kevin. This guy looks like he's been here before. Shooting the ball as well as anyone in the country. Takes his time, doesn't turn it over. He's very patient, can pass out of the post. Just a very, very talented big that is only getting better. Freshman of the week for the fourth time in six weeks. Look at the numbers from a week ago. 22 and a half points, seven rebounds, and shooting 78% from the floor over the last week. But he is matched up against his equal tonight, seven-foot junior Liam Robbins of Minnesota. Yeah, Liam Robbins can give Hunter Dickinson problems because he leads the Big Ten in blocks, third in the country. He's had five games with at least four blocks. So you see his defensive prowess at the rim. But here's the thing, he's good offensively as well. Can step away for, and shoot the three. He's really good inside, very efficient when he gets the basketball. This is going to be a fantastic matchup against two quality bigs. Hunter Dickinson, the freshman of the week. Liam Robbins, the Big Ten player of the week. Averaged a double-double last week. And that performance against Ohio State was something to talk about. 27 points, 14 rebounds. Richard Patino telling us earlier today that was his best game as a gopher. But when you look at the gophers, yes, Liam Robbins draws a lot of attention. But Marcus Parr deserves a lot of the props. I agree. Uh, leading assist man in the Big Ten. But you don't think about his assist because he scored it so well from all three levels he can go in the post he can hit you from long range and he's great at drawing contact strong physical but can really score the rock let's get our starting lineups our public address announcer is Anthony Bellino at guard 66 junior from Austin Minnesota number 11 Booth Dodge at guard, 6'4", junior from Dynamo, Minnesota, number 22, Gabe Kelser. And at forward, a 6'8", redshirt senior from Chicago, Illinois, 23, Brandon Johnson. Head coach for the Golden Gophers is Richard Patino. We know you 
would rather be inside Chrysler Center for this game. So we're trying to give you a little taste of what it feels like to be in the arena right before tip off. And we're closing in on tip and we're closing in on a great showdown between Minnesota and Michigan. And, and Stephen Bardo, Franz Wagner over the last three games really seems to have found another level to his game. Yeah, this is the scary part that he's just starting to find another level, Kevin, and is still undefeated. At 6'9", he's a unique player, probably the most unique, in my opinion, in the Big Ten Conference. In terms of he's a two guard, but he's 6'9", can get inside and rebound. He's shooting the ball with more confidence. He can put it on the deck. He touches every aspect of the game. Those numbers over the last three games, 17.7 points per game. The rebounding the same. He's sharing the basketball more. He's blocking shots. He's got steals. He's doing it all on both ends of the floor. And Franz Wagner's growth really helps a team in Michigan that already looks pretty good at 9-0 on the season. For Minnesota to knock off this Michigan team, Stephen, you talked about it in the pregame. They need to be home Minnesota on the road. Yeah, they need to figure out a way to get going early. I think they get Barry Kevin on the road early and then they can't recover. They've got to find a way to get Marcus Carr confident. Gabe Kalsher could take a lot of pressure off of them. But if they could get their backcourt going early, I think that they, it would bode well for them because to me it's just a confidence thing. They've got to get over that lack of confidence on the road. Those two losses, 92-65 at Illinois, 71-59 at Wisconsin. Good foes on the road, but that's what you're going to find in this conference night in and night out. This is a good Minnesota team, very good Michigan team. What a matchup for you on a Wednesday night when we all could use a little college basketball on this Wednesday. Let's get it going. Two of the best bigs in the country, Liam Robbins and Hunter Dickinson. And the tip controlled by Minnesota, and here we go. You know, Kevin, I think Brandon Johnson could have some impact. The young man with the basketball right now for Minnesota. Unique talent at that four position. Eight for nine from three against the Iowa Hawkeyes in their win against Iowa a couple of weeks back. The entry into Johnson that's tipped away, able to get it back. Shot clock at two as they turn it over, and it'll belong to Michigan. Well, the Wolverines, one of the better defensive teams in two-point range in the country. So Minnesota's going to have to clear their defensive glass and try to get early opportunities. You hear a few fans in the building. That is not... A mistake that is not a surprise. The families of the players have now started to come to games in Ann Arbor as the three off the front of the rim won't go. Offensive rebound for Dickinson, and he'll put it back in for the first two of Michigan. Nice job by Hunter Dickinson getting the offensive rebound and then taking the dribble into Robbins to negate his shot blocking ability. Nice finish. Trying to feed it inside. Tipped out to Kalsher. Tend to shoot for Carr. Jump pass into the corner to Kalsher. Entry to Robbins. Robbins inside. Oh. Going to work against Dickinson. Oh, welcome to the Big Ten, young fella. Liam Robbins <laughs> with the right shoulder in the mouth as he finishes at the rim. And a turnover by Michigan going back the other way. Well, we set it up as a big man battle classic. Look at this. I'm going to hit you, and I'm going to finish. And then you know what, young fella? I felt that hit. I'll do you one better. I'll finish with my left off glass. I like where this is headed, Stephen Bardo. His car on the run can't get it to go. Rebound cleared by Michigan. And looking to push Wagner to Brooks for three in transition. And the rebound to Brandon Johnson. That's still a good look. Brooks had a wide open look stepping into a three. Here's Gabe Kalsher way off the mark. Brooks on the push. Wagner banging against Kalsher. Ball pops free in the corner and out of bounds. It'll be Michigan ball, last touched by Booth Gotch. Kevin, I like what I'm seeing early from Wagner. He recognized he had an op he had an advantage. He was going to back Kalsher into the post. 
We didn't see that early in the season out of Wagner. Part of his game taking that next step. He's going to work against Kalsher again. The turnaround kind of shot put at that one toward the rim and the rebound to Minnesota. Yeah, I think he settled a little bit. Got to go a little bit harder with that crab dribble to get some space into the paint. Robbins will pop up top. He's hit eight threes this year. He can shoot it from out there. As he launches and hits, now he's got nine threes. Well, Liam Robbins is tired of hearing about this Big Ten freshman of the week like four or five times. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to let people in the Big Ten know, I belong here. A little bump on Johnson. The foul is called. There's Liam Robbins, all five points early for Minnesota. He transferred from Drake, and I'll tell you, Drake, you'd think losing a guy like Liam Robbins, Darren DeVries' team in the Missouri Valley Conference would take a major step back. They're 13-0 and this year without him. Isn't that something? Livers in the corner. That's a three. And a real good sign for Isaiah Livers, who rolled his ankle in the first half two games ago against Maryland and is now looking healthy again. And that's the scary part, because the Wolverines are still successful when he wasn't 100%. So you can see why everybody is so high on these Michigan Wolverines. There's Carr curling up top for the three. That air ball out of bounds to Michigan. Richard Patino, we're talking with him earlier today, and I said, you yeah, know, that's a good win you had the other night against Ohio State. That's a real good team. And Richard Patino paused for a moment, and he said, well, you know, Kevin, humbly speaking, I think we're a pretty good team, too. <laughs> I said, yes, you are. Yeah, no, that's, that's pretty evident right now, early, early in this Big Ten slate. Mike Smith off the miss and the rebound to Robbins. Trying to turn the corner on the livers. The entry to Robbins in the post. With the left hand, left it short. Rebound tipped out to Livers. I like the way the officials are letting it play inside. And Robbins got a hand on it and saves it for Minnesota. So I want our viewers to understand, Kevin, we're not looking at two stiffs in the post. These guys can move. These are really good athletes for this. Off the mark on that three and out of bounds to the Wolverines. And a timeout on the floor. Minnesota and Michigan. It is everything we expected in the first four and a half. 21 points, 12 assists, no turnovers last year against Michigan, and Marcus Carr doing it all this year, leading the league in minutes, in assists, third in points, fifth and three-point field goal made. And it begs the question, Stephen Bardo, is it the shoes? Might be the shoes. I mean, it very well could be the shoes. The green Grinch Kobe's, as Lisa Byington so astutely has informed us. I tell you what, I... Minnesota Michigan have really good teams, but I take our team, Kevin, up against them any night. Our, shoot, our point guard, Lisa Byington, throwing us an assist because, you know, I'm too old to know about shoes. So thank you, Lisa. <laughs> Currently in my home, I'm not wearing shoes, so I'm in good shape. <laughs> Dropping it off with a two-hand flush for Hunter Dickinson. Beautiful work from Smith to Dickinson. Oh, you called it, Kevin. He, man, Mike Smith put his defender in the popcorn popper. He didn't know which way it was going. Smith with his chef's apron on, serving it up. Isaiah Enid will try from deep. That three won't go, and Dickinson wrestles away the rebound. Got caught in the air and finds Eli Brooks, but we've got a whistle and a turnover. The travel first. Well, Mike Smith heard a lot about Marcus Carr coming into this game. So you know what? Ooh. Now you see me, now you don't. Draws Robbins to him, drops it off to Dickinson. That's a heck of a play. Michigan at 9-0, but the question that some have had is, 
have they played a schedule that's good enough? This is a great test tonight as Brooks to the other end gives Michigan the four-point lead. And speaking of shoes, we are one shoe short for one of the Gophers. Gotch had his shoe come off and he tossed it underneath the basket on the other end. There he is, one shoe on, one shoe off. Well, it was, oh, he got inadvertently stepped on there by Wagner coming through the lane. Jamal oh. Mashburn Jr. said, enough of this shoe, I'm getting it off this court. <laughs> Tell you what, shoe's getting a lot of play here early in this one. <laughs> I think Isaiah, I think Isaiah Eden needs to be aggressive looking for his shot as well. He can stretch the three, stretch the defense for this three-point shooter. Four to shoot, gonna have to hurry. Kelsher with two to shoot. In the corner, it's Mashburn, and Mashburn stepped out of bounds. And it'll be a turnover back to Michigan. Well, Jamal Mashburn Jr. is out of bounds right there when he makes the pass. And then he comes back. Can't do that. Donnie Epley right on the call. Boy, nice job fronting that time by Gabe Kalsen. There's Livers has his pocket pick. Carr going the other way. Numbers if he hurries. Kalsher going baseline. And Kalsher with the reverse to cut it to a two-point game. That's big for Minnesota. If Gabe Kalsher can get going offensively, it takes a lot of pressure off Marcus Carr. Richard Pitino told us earlier today, Kalsher's trending in the right direction. Six of his last 16 from three. And a beautiful spin by Hunter Dickinson on the baseline. See what I mean, ladies and gentlemen? That's the freshman don't typically make that move. He saw a double team coming, spun away from the defense, and got all the way to the bucket. Old for a freshman at 20 years of age as Franz Wagner was in front of that ball, but the ball out of bounds off Minnesota. Look at the feel of the big fella. He sees Enid coming on the double. He spins away and gets to the rim. And Gabe Couch is doing a great job denying Franz Wagner that post-up opportunity. And then Kalsher using the rim for protection, goes high off the glass. Nice start for Gabe Kalsher. Four turnovers apiece. Livers trying to cash in on this one, and that shot out of bounds. It'll belong back to the Gophers. Isaiah Livers thinking that he's like, man, I'm a senior. I don't shoot air balls on purpose. <laughs> Can't look at this one. They cannot go to the monitor with 12.42 remaining in the first half to check a possession. So it will belong to Minnesota. With, with Shondi Brown in the game right now guarding Marcus Carr, Minnesota is going to have to put some wood on Brown. He is a physical defender. If you don't pick him, he's tough to shake. Eric Curry misses that, got his own back. Brandon Johns Jr. says no. From deep. Pinball's out. And Curry starts it up for Minnesota. Carr, quick as a hiccup to the rim, can't get it to go, and it'll go out of bounds to Michigan. Well, Brandon Johns is going to be key to the depth of the Wolverines. Sticks with the play. Curry gets it back. Look at the timing. Keep it in bounds. Nice job. I think with Austin Davis's absence with his plantar fasciitis, Brandon Johns is now starting to get the confidence that this Michigan uh, coaching staff wanted to see. Well, the C parted there for Mike Smith to get to the rim, and Michigan up by six. Minnesota's got to be careful here. We've, we've referenced their struggles on the road. They cannot get down double digits in the first half. There's Curry to work against John. He'll try him again. This time the hook falls for Eric Curry. Well, that's nice recognition by the Gophers. They spaced out and allowed Curry the whole side to work. Bounce. 
extra pass Smith to Wagner. That's not going to go, and the rebound out of bounds. It'll stay with Michigan, and a timeout on the floor at Chrysler Center. Basketball on the Big Ten Network is brought to you by Auto Owners Insurance. Simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if Auto Owners makes sense for you. 2019 was a thriller between these two. That's Charles Matthews, the baseline floater at the buzzer, won it. Gophers had scored 10 straight to tie that game late. And then Charles Matthews saved the day for the Michigan Wolverines, who lead this one 13-9, 11-10 remaining in the first half alongside Stephen Bardo. I'm Kevin Kugler, Michigan with the basketball, and it's been billed because we build it as such as a big man matchup. Robbins and Dickinson have combined for 11 points so far tonight. And John's inside working hard to get two for Michigan. I'm telling you, Brandon Johns, this is the guy that we thought he would become, Kevin. Guy that could come in, be very athletic, locked in on the defensive end, and be efficient when he gets his number called. Carr will leave in the corner. Kalsher will step out for the three, and he hits. That's a big bucket for Minnesota as Gabe Kalsher hits the deep jumper. They call it a two on the floor, but Minnesota still within four. No, that's a wonderful sign for the Gophers because shooters need that first one to go. He got that layup, and now that two seems a lot easier. Eric Curry with a good defensive play in the post against Johns to get it back from Minnesota. Watch the feet of Kalsher. It looks like the officials got that one right. 98% of the time, they do. Had that right foot on the line. Good call. Our officials tonight, Donnie Epley, Bo Borowski, Brooks Wells. It was Brooks Wells who was eyeing that one over in that corner on the right side. And the two called, 15-11, Michigan by four. That's Carr, backs it up top. Brandon Johnson off the heel. Franz Wagner with the board for the Wolverines. Nice screen by Dickinson. John Brown from the elbow. That's not going. Johnson's rebound will start it up for Minnesota. Kalsher left all alone for three. Way off the mark, and Johns catches the air ball. Well, Kalsher, that's usually money when he's wide open like that. Probably too open for his liking. Really struggled to start the year. Started 9 of 48 from three before his recent hot surge over a couple of games. And Smith, five to shoot, bumped by Liam Robbins, and that'll be a foul on Robbins, his first, Minnesota's second. That's such a heady play by Mike Smith. Understanding that Robbins is on the baseline, he thought, Robbins thought Smith was gonna go back out. Smith went baseline, drew the contact. Any foul you could put on a big, that's a, that's a, a heads up play. Two team fouls for Minnesota. Not a foul whistled yet against the Wolverines. Here's Dickinson backing down against Robbins, attacking him after he picked up his first, but Robbins up to the challenge. Nice play by Sean D. Brown to get in front of that entry pass intended for Brandon Johnson. Sean D. Brown has accepted his role. He's, a, he's relishing in his role as a defensive stopper. And a lot of times young players, young ladies and young men, when you lock in first on the defensive end, your offense comes a lot easier. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but that's the way it happens. Ray Williams thought about the tray, instead drives in for a deuce and has it blocked away. Robbins from the logo, a little bit strong, and the rebound to Brandon Johns Jr. I think Robbins was kind of surprised he was that open there at the Big Ten logo. It goes to Eli Brooks. That three won't go. The rebound for Johnson. Michigan hasn't scored in two and a half minutes. Minnesota 0 for their last four. Something's got to give, and it's Marcus Carr who gives two 
to the Gophers. Nice job by Carr using that traffic there among the bigs as a screen to allow him to get all the way to the rim. And a timeout is called with 8.18 remaining in the first half by Michigan. We'll take the timeout as well. Two-point game between two top 20 teams at Chrysler Center. Well, we talked about a big man matchup classic. Power move in the paint by Liam Robbins. Then he steps away and says, you know what? I feel comfortable out here too, but Hunter Dickinson says, you know what? I'm going to let you feel me, big fella and spin baseline and score. Both guys playing well. And then Robbins here, Kevin, has one foul. But watch out how aggressive he is defensively. Gets the deflection, and the Gophers are going the other way. Robbins and Dickinson off to good starts each. Five points for Liam Robbins, six points for Hunter Dickinson. Robbins, one rebound, and Dickinson with a pair of boards in their nine minutes played. Big man battle, at least so far living up to expectations and somebody's got to give Liam Robbins some love man on his hair that's a sweet dude man check that out <laughs> he's got the sides faded but he's got the top long but it doesn't look crazy it looks you know, it looks well kept almost boy band-esque for Liam Robbins I would agree Smith had to pivot out of traffic gets it back over to livers and a foul before the shot, will go against Minnesota. Brandon Johnson with his second. Kevin, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge Big Ten fans are some of the best in the country in University of Michigan and the Raidler family. Bob and Mary Joyce Raidler have been Michigan fans for decades. Their son, Chad, is a Michigan man with with undergrad and law school there, so big ups to the Raider family. And I know they would, they're enjoying what they're seeing right now out of their big man with a nice dish from Mike Smith in a four point lead. Hunter Dickinson is so good. There's no wasted motion. He doesn't hurry, he's not in a rush. He's just got such a great feel for the game. Step back jumper, that one falls. A deep two for Jamal Mashburn Jr. Was trying to get baseline blocked off by Enan, and he'll step back and hit a deep two of his own. Now, I want people to understand that Isaiah Enan is 6'9, and Livers drove him and faded against 6'9 and made it look easy. I mean, this, this is a difficult play. He's going right, creates space, he's got 6'9 lunging at him, and doesn't matter. And then watch Dickinson. Rolls like he's supposed to as a big, catches, goes right up and finishes. He and Mike Smith have nice chemistry. And the ball taken away. Livers on the run to the other end, and the one-hand hammer for Isaiah Livers. Great job of anticipation, and those are scouting reports steal. Eli Brooks got one earlier, now it's Isaiah Livers' turn. These guys are locked in on the scouting report. And a timeout utilized by Minnesota. See, this is textbook defense. You go with your outside hand to avoid a foul on the steal. Isaiah Livers making it look easy and giving the Wolverines a six-point lead. It looks like that ankle is off to a pretty good. good start. Yeah, I would say so, Stephen. He's off to an excellent start with seven points. Had scored 17 in the last two games combined as he tried to battle back from that ankle injury in the first half at Maryland. He stayed in that game, played the Northwestern game, but looking like he is feeling good right now, elevating well on a 21-15 lead for Michigan that prompted a timeout from Richard Pitino. Oh, and I just love what I saw. So when you're in the huddle, there's one voice in the huddle that's the head coach. Their eyes were fixated on Jawan Howard. A lot of times you'll see guys in a huddle, they're listening, but they may not be looking. My high school coach, Doug Willard, Kevin, made us look him in the eye when he was talking. That is such a critical piece for a winning program. 
That's a great observation, Stephen, and that is if you can't have respect as a basketball player for your head coach when he's Juwan Howard, you're not going to have a lot of respect for anybody. That man has proven it time and time again on the court and proven it on the sidelines. And this is what Stephen was talking about in that huddle with the head man when, he's, when he talks, people listen, and they look. Watch these guys. Look at all of them. They are looking right at Jawan, hanging on every word he's saying, nodding in, a, in appreciation. Wagner's right next to him. That's why they're undefeated. Everybody at this level can play, but it's the intangibles and team chemistry that make you a champion. And Wagner with a three stretches Michigan to their largest lead of the night at nine. So this is what makes Michigan so good. They hit you with a 7-0 run, and they lock down defensively because they're old enough to understand this is a critical junction of the game. A three won't go for Carr. Rebound loose, picked up by Smith, and Mike Smith will start it up for Michigan. Smith around the Dickinson screen. Somehow bounces back up to Livers. Livers three halfway down. It pops up. Well, Boosh Gotch hasn't taken a shot all night. He's got to get involved offensively. Here's Carr. Pass tipped away. Saved by Kalsher. And a whistle and a foul. First foul on Smith. First Michigan foul. You know, one thing that Richard Pitino charts is passes, and he tweeted this a couple of weeks ago, move the ball and good things happen. 180 passes against Illinois, they lost the game. They had 200 in the St. Louis win, 190 against Michigan State. They had 245 passes in the Iowa win. I bring it up right now because they've made seven field goals tonight, Stephen. There's only one Minnesota assist this evening as Isaiah Enan hits a big three to break that Michigan run and draw the Gophers within six, but they're not moving the ball the way Richard Pitino would like them to, certainly in this first Half. Kevin, I love that because that breaks the game down to saying, hey, you know, the game is not difficult. If you do certain things, you're going to have success. And when you can break it down for your players like that, it lets them focus on those little things as opposed to getting caught up in the overall, uh, you know, emotion of the game. And, and it's a simple thing. Move the ball and good things happen. And it showed in those passing numbers, 245 passes in the win over Iowa. That's a ton of ball movement. I agree. And I, I think it's fascinating that they track that. Jumper by Hunter Dickinson. He has 10 points on five of six shooting. Of course, he's the Big Ten leader at 72% from the floor. Ball taken away. Here comes Livers. Another breakaway opportunity and another stuff this time with two hands. Well, one team is opportunistic on the defensive end. The other team seems a little stagnant. And it has a lot to do with the swarming nature of Michigan's defense. Here's Enan trying for a three. Off. No good. Livers tips the rebound to himself. Livers. Bump, ball loose, and picked up by the Gophers. Well, that's really good hands defensively by Eric Curry. Just got his left hand in there and swiped the ball away from Livers. Curry back out. Here's Booth Gotch looking for the three. Dies on the back iron. Tip by Kalsher won't go. And the rebound saved for Michigan. What a play by Livers. Dickinson driving to the rim and Hunter Dickinson punishing the iron. Oh, that's great two-man basketball by Michigan. And you know what else I like about Hunter Dickinson? Kevin, he smiles. When he does something good, he smiles. He's not too cool for school. I love that. Show us some emotion, big fella. He's had a lot to smile about in this game and in the early stages of his career. Good defense there by Dickinson against Curry. Well, I said Minnesota couldn't go down double digits in the first half. Exactly where they find themselves. Still enough time to wrestle the momentum back, but they've got to come up with some stops. 
Tough one for Dickinson to get. That'll go and a timeout on the floor with the turnover back to Minnesota. Isaiah Livers opportunistic defensive play. And then thank goodness the bleachers are pushed back so Livers can go for the steal with no repercussions. And then the two-man basketball with Hunter Dickinson feeling good about their lead. Michigan by 12.30 to 18, 2.37 remaining in the first half with Stephen Bardo. I'm Kevin Kugler. Sunday on the Big Ten Network, Marcus Carr and these Gophers seek another victory against Luca Garza and the fifth-ranked Hawkeyes. Big Ten basketball presented by Jeep Sunday at 2.30 Eastern on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Marcus Carr, one of those guys trying to get going against this Michigan defense that has stifled Minnesota to just 30% shooting in the first half. Carr, one for five, only two first half points. In fact, no gopher, Stephen, has scored above five points in this first half. Yeah, you, you, you have to tip your hat to the Wolverines defense. I mean, they've been outstanding, and they've been like this all season long, and especially with a guy like Marcus Carr, you know they're going to throw a lot of bodies at him, a lot of help, help side defenders will be near, very near. And Kalsher bumped on his way to the basket. That'll be the second foul on Mike Smith. 2.26 to go. Minnesota will inbound once more. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report, Dave Rebson, Robbie Hummel, and Andy Katz get you the first half highlights and reaction along with getting you up to speed on all the latest news from around the Big Ten coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report. For their last seven as Carr launches the three, and that was an uncontested look. You could see Jawan Howard with his arms outstretched on the sideline as he watched Carr get that clean look at a three. Yeah, uh, one of the few defensive breakdowns we've seen with Michigan tonight, and Carr good enough to make him pay. Oh, look at that spin move from Hunter Dickinson. Well coached at the Matha Catholic in high school. He's been coached more by Jawan Howard at this level, and it is paying off. It really is. I mean, he, he's so quick, Kevin, that the double team can't even come. Uh -oh. Look who's heating up, Stephen. Marcus Carr starting to get it going. And see, this is what I was wondering. Is he going to shake off the road situation? Come out and just be aggressive. Now he's starting to pick it up. Long pass to Terrence Williams. Now Brown with 10 to shoot. Tough contested two. That's short. Rebound Johnson. If I'm Carr, I'm looking to shoot right now. Let it fly. He'll attack and a foul on the floor. Eli Brooks with the whistle. I mean, you take a look at Marcus Carr. Look at his shoulders. Look at his arms. This is a strong lead guard. I mean, like, he can fight defenders off. He can get in the lane. Oh, great defense. Boy, terrific defense. The mishandle and out of bounds off Minnesota. That foul on Terrence Williams a moment ago. And now the turnover for Minnesota. That is eight turnovers. Minnesota has given it up eight times. Michigan scored 11 points off the previous seven. So this game could be even uh, in more favor of Michigan. But Minnesota very fortunate, but they've got to close this half out in strong fashion. Dickinson left that one a little short. Robbins with the rebound, his second. Here comes Carr. He's hit two threes. Driving this one towards the rim, draws the foul, and he'll go to the line with 45 seconds left in the first half. But it's clear, Stephen, that Marcus Carr has decided to assert himself over the last few minutes of this half. Well, one of the reasons he's able to score 22 points a game is because he gets to the free throw line as well as anybody in the country. He's made the most in the country, and he's attempted the second most. So this is a big part of what he does on the offensive end. And a big part of what Minnesota does on the offensive end. That was the first attempt of the night. They averaged 46 free throws for every 100 shot attempts that they take. Fifth most in the country. And they shoot 75% as a team. But they have just not gotten to the line tonight as Carr hits the first two attempts for any go for tonight. 
and see what I liked in that last possession, that Carr really didn't have anything, but he forced the issue, and good things happened. Maybe his teammates can pick up on that and do the same. Looking baseline, Williams blocked off. Here's Sean D. Brown driving inside. Robbins comes over to clean it up. Now look Minnesota at this. Minnesota can hold for the final shot here. Minnesota will tell you they not they have not been close to their best. And they have an opportunity to really take some momentum into this halftime break, Kevin. Down six, car to work, two seconds, one second, deep three, will not go. Halftime is here, but Michigan's lead once 12 was carved in half before the half. Thanks to Marcus Carr pouring in two threes and two free throws to get Minnesota right back in this ballgame. Our State Farm halftime report is coming up. Dave Rebson, Robbie Hummel, and Andy Katz have all the first half highlights and reaction for you coming up in just a moment. Michigan's lead at the break in Ann Arbor is six. State Farm halftime straight ahead on the Big Ten Network. Under Juwan Howard, the Michigan Wolverines are 13-1 and when they lead at half in Big Ten games. They're up six as we get ready to start the second half from Chrysler Center alongside Stephen Bardo. I'm Kevin Kugler. It's a six-point game because Marcus Carr got hot late. And he had to, Kevin, because the rest of his teammates shooting seven for 22 in the first half. But he was the only one, the only bright spot down the stretch when they struggled. This can hit them with a 7-0 run. He responds and does what great players do. Gets his teammate, teammates some confidence. And hopefully they can build on that momentum here in the second half. Minnesota ended on an 8-2 run, all eight points from Marcus Carr as we start off this second half with Michigan up by six. I think First Brandon. half battle of the bigs. The freshman got the better of the big man for Minnesota. He goes right back to work. Hunter Dickinson with a pair. You know what he just did? They called it a repost. And you have to be very patient to do that as a big because when you give it up as a big, sometimes you feel like you're not going to get it back. He's got trust in his teammates. He reposted deeper, got the ball in point blank range, and converted. There's Bruce Gotch on the drive. That won't go, and Minnesota gives it up one and done. Deep in the block. What good position he got down the floor. He saw that Robbins had fell down, and so Dickinson rim run straight down the, to the block. Nice job of keeping it high away from Kalsha. Robbins will try the three. In and out for Liam Robbins, who has gone cold now, just two of seven from the floor. On the drive, Rivers all the way to the rim, and Michigan matches its largest lead at 12. Minnesota looks a little shell-shocked coming out of the halftime break. They're really sloppy on their defensive assignments here early. Here's Carr trying to get going again. That floater's short. One and done once more. Dickinson with his fourth board. In the corner, Wagner. Hill attack. Wagner bumped. The bucket will count and the foul. Oh, the wave off the basket. The foul on the floor before the shot. So a foul on the floor as Michigan tries to stretch the lead. Yeah, Kevin, I know I know what you're doing. I'm, I'm the same way. Uh, you know, that, that's wishful thinking that the college game would adopt the, the true and one situation when a guy is going into a shot. Go ahead and count it. I'll keep my fingers crossed that someday we get that, Stephen. Yeah, well, if we keep talking about it, hopefully somebody's listening. <laughs> And this is a great test 26 for the Gophers here on the road. Down 12, you, you don't have much going. 
Brandon Johnson goes to the bench with three fouls. Who's going to step up for Minnesota? And a little contact with Robbins and a turnover back to Minnesota as Mike Smith goes out of bounds. No contact, no. No contact. I think Mike Smith is kind of shaking his head like, man, that would have never happened at Columbia. Fight it up on my back. I'd get a call. Carr on the attack, trying to pick up where he left off at the end of the half. Can't get it to fall. Rebound saved by Michigan's Eli Brooks. Boy, tough break for the Gophers. Point blank range. Wagner on the drive. Oh, he tried to throw it down and instead gets the foul. Can did he elevate towards that rim? Kevin, this is why I think he's the most unique player in the Big Ten. He's 6'9", but he can do this. He can stretch out on you. Much better athlete than giving credit for. And I love the aggressiveness. Go to the rim and let your opponent know that you're coming each and every time strong. Almost put Liam Robbins on a poster. Almost. That one wouldn't go down, and Wagner will get one more free throw. Second foul on Robbins. And Wagner quiet so far tonight. He's got five, but Michigan's lead its largest at 14. So it looks like Michigan did it. Oh, I thought they were going to extend a little bit, but just good, solid man-to-man -man defense here. Oh, great hard hands by run. Hunter Dickinson. And Gotch bumped on the baseline by Wagner. Boy, Hunter Dickinson getting after it defensively. This is not easy. That's an All-American he just corralled on the bounce and then got back defensively. This Wolverines team is really locked in on the defensive end. Kalsher at the foul line. That one falls, and that is the first bucket of the second half for Minnesota. Breaks the 8-0 Michigan start. Boy, you usually don't see Kalsha going off the bounce. That's something that he has added to his game this season. Around a couple of screens, Mike Smith can't get it to go. But there's the putback for Hunter Dickinson. Good luck, Marcus Carr, as he tried to box out the big man. Great feet from Carr, and inside in with the flush. Yeah, you, just, you haven't seen that this that often this evening. Where Minnesota gets an easy look. Smith backs it out to Livers. Ten to shoot for Livers. Here's Smith got the open three, and it goes down. So this is what makes Michigan so difficult to defend. You gotta pay attention to Hunter Dickinson, but everybody flows off of him. Rivers has gotten involved. Wagner's gotten going here. And the collision between Enan and Brooks will take us to a timeout in Ann Arbor. Well, Michigan's starting to flex their muscles here in the second half. Drawing the double team, kicking out to Mike Smith, and the Wolverines are rolling. That collision that we talked about going to break with Eli Brooks, Eli Brooks leaves the floor. He lost a tooth in this collision with Isaiah Enan. Watch the collision again. Brooks and Enan collide, and the tooth which was found by Michigan during the timeout on the floor, comes flying out as he is hit by Isaiah Enid. Wow, that is a nasty collision. It runs right into the elbow. Isaiah, oh, I just saw the tooth on the left side. I did fly too. Fly out. Wow. And they say that Basketball is not a contact sport. I beg to differ. Now that tooth came flying out. Eli Brooks is okay. Alex Wong, the athletic trainer, was looking at him during the timeout. And 
They'll have to have a little dental work done. Franz Wagner picking up right where Michigan left off before the injury to Eli Brooks and a 17-point Wolverines lead. Kalsher short, Enan offensive rebound. Well, Kalsher had a pretty good look, but the 6'9", Wagner closed out quickly and bothered his release. Another offensive board, Robbins trying to keep it going now for Minnesota. Can he get a two? That won't go. And the rebound tipped out of bounds. And it's going to stay on this end of the floor. So right now, if you're Minnesota, you obviously want to look to Carr, but Robbins is trying to force the issue a little bit. Mashburn is on the floor right now. He is a capable and willing scorer. But a turnover on the inbound numbers for Michigan. Wagner with a Euro step to the rim. Boy, Michigan's defense is just suffocating right now. Everything on the offensive end, just so difficult for Minnesota. No easy looks. Got a whistle and an offensive foul. Carr using the off arm as he came through, and that foul will be his first. That was a good call. Boborowski was all over that. Watch the chicken wing come out right there. It's a frustrating night so far for the Gophers. They just they're seeing what a lot of people around the country are seeing right now is an elite defensive team in Michigan. Michigan fifth in the country, Stephen, defending the two-point shot. Opponents are shooting 39% from two against Michigan this year. Tonight, Minnesota's at 35% from two-point land as Livers three crashes against the back iron. Here's Booth Gotch back out to Carr. Michigan has outscored Minnesota 17 to 4 in the second half. Boy, these guys are locked in, aren't they? Wagner is doing the flex on the defensive side. That's how you know this team is locked in. That's usually seen on the offensive end. Three to shoot. Entry to Freeman. Freeman trying to get it going, and he does against Hunter Dickinson, and Freeman with the left hand. Sometimes you got to come off the bench with seldom used players when you can't find your rhythm. There's Dickinson back to work again. Great post position, 22 points for Hunter Dickinson. I think Dickinson. Kevin catches the ball as close to the rim as any post player in college basketball. Minnesota with the timeout. It is all Michigan right now. Dickinson with 22 points. Better get him another Big Ten Freshman of the Week award ready. We're getting a chance to look at one of the premier bigs in the country. Look at this. This is usually reserved for upperclassmen, Kevin. The ability to repost and trust your teammates. Goes strong defensively with his hands up, and then he puts it into fifth gear to get to the bucket. He's got Gabe Couch on his back, keeps it high, finish. And then look at his hard head. That's an All-American guard he helped contain. So it's not just his offensive prowess that has him on the floor. It's his overall game and knowledge of the game is what makes this young man so special. And there's that smile again, Stephen, that you pointed out earlier from Hunter Dickinson. He is enjoying every minute of this, and why not? I agree. And Freeman battling with it, and Brandon Johns Jr. called for the personal foul. I like what Freeman did. He kind of threw it up on the glass and went and got it. And he was able to get to the free throw line, so bringing some energy off the bench. Well, 
Stream every Big Ten Network game on the Fox Sports app presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Download today on your smartphone, tablet, and connected devices. Sam Freeman with four. That's a high for Sam Freeman. Well, you, you can tell with Freeman in the game right now, Minnesota's got some nice depth up front. And Isaiah Livers attacking the basket. He'll go to the line for one more, continuing a stellar second half for the Wolverines. See, the difference between these two teams this evening is that it looks like Michigan, when they're running their offense, they look like they're coming downhill. Like everything is going towards the basket, whereas Minnesota seems like they can't penetrate the initial pressure of Michigan. So whereas Michigan's living in the paint, Minnesota has to settle on a lot of outside shots. Lickers good on the free throw, completing the three-point play. An update courtesy of Tom Weirot, the fine sports information guru from Michigan men's basketball. And a handsome man at that. He says Eli Brooks will not return. He's waiting for the dentist. No concussion, but to let everybody know he is doing just fine. Just waiting for a little dental repair after the collision with Isaiah Enan that cost Eli Brooks temporarily a tooth. So, Tom, everything Kevin said, I agree with, except that you don't look good. <laughs> Put me on record as saying that. <laughs> oh, the live ball to Shawnee Brown for the two-hand flush. That kind of sums up the night right there. There's a loose ball. There's a 50-50 ball. Michigan comes up with it and ends up with an easy dunk at the rim. Minnesota's road woes seem to continue. Longer with the rebound. Here comes Mike Smith. On the drive, and that's two more for Michigan. That night where you just throw everything toward the basket that goes in. And that one. A whistle and a stoppage to play. Shawnee Brown still down. Timeout on the floor. All Michigan and Ann Arbor. Well, before Shawnee Brown caught that elbow to the grill, he was able to come up with a steal and a nice dunk. And then Mike Smith doing what he used to do back in Shot Town. 58-34, Michigan with the lead, 11-20 remaining in the second half. The foul before the break is going to be upgraded to a flagrant one on Trey Williams for this contact above the neck area on the face of Shawnee Brown. Yeah, it looks like Williams, I don't know if that was instinctive. I don't think, I, I know, I, I can almost, I'm almost certain it wasn't intentional. He's just trying to get past an elite defender. Got that, that wing up a little bit too high. It's called for the flake. Obviously, I'm not in that young man's head, but I've covered Trey Williams now for one and a half seasons, and I haven't seen anything that would indicate anything malicious. And, you know, him talking to Bo Borowski, this is excellent, because that's why Bo was one of the best that we have in this game, because he will explain to you what's going on. When you saw he's physically showing Trey Williams, here's what you did, here's what you need to do. It's a learning opportunity. And I'm just glad that Brown is not hurt with that elbow. Livers step back after the jab for a three. That short offensive rebound. Yeah, Shawnee Brown looks like he feels just fine. This is just relentless. It, it, it doesn't seem like they let up at all, regardless of the score. They just keep coming at you. They are playing a whale of a game tonight, shooting 61% from the floor as Gabe Kalsher's three won't go. Meanwhile, Minnesota 4 of 18 from three tonight against a team that has struggled to defend the three-point shot all year long. That's been really one of the Achilles heels for this Michigan defense. And a travel turning it over. 
over Zeb Jackson. Well, you're, you're looking at the depth of the Wolverines and one of the reasons why they're undefeated. Just keep coming with waves. Zeb Jackson in the game. Terrence Williams was in earlier. So a lot of guys getting important, important minutes tonight for Michigan. Nine to eight, Michigan over Minnesota in the second half as the three for Johnson rims out to Franz Wagner. Well, the Gophers could use some Walter Bond, former player, for some help. And fouls. Johns will go to the line. Brandon Johns has the ability to do that almost every time he's on the floor. Lively body at 6'8". Starting to come into his own a little bit. Two points, couple of rebounds tonight for Brandon Johns Jr. Coming up, the Big Ten live basketball postgame presented by Speedway delivers highlights, expert analysis, and press conferences. That's coming up after the game on the Big Ten Network. That's the James Brown of college basketball, Robbie Hummel. <laughs> he takes no nights off. Make sure you stick around for that. Hardest working man in showbiz. That's right. Well, if you're Minnesota, you're just trying to run your stuff now. I don't think they have the confidence to make a, a huge push to get back in this game. But you want to get some, something positive out of these last nine and a half minutes. Steven, they've scored eight second half points as Wagner lines up the three. Rattles home. Everything falling for Michigan as they've outscored Minnesota 33-8 in the second half. I mean, this is a this is the number 16 team in the country, and I don't think that I think that ranking is accurate. It's just that Michigan is playing as well as anybody in the country right now. There's Brown turning the corner. Rob back out. And Robbins reaching in gets the foul. His third. Kevin, there's been a couple plays that are indicative of how the night is going for Michigan. This is one of them. One, two, three, four. It's every piece of the rim, and then drops to the net. Then that kind of night for the Wolverine. No doubt about that. And now we'll going to the free throw line for a one and one opportunity. Is Hunter Dickinson closing in on a career high? He has 22, make it 23. His best game was at Maryland on the 31st of December when he put 26 on the board. You have a big that can repost, shoot free throws, be unselfish. I mean, maybe he could get stronger, but I, I don't know if there's a lot in his game that he can really improve upon. Defensively, this Michigan team has completely taken Minnesota out of what they want to do. Eight and a half to go. Brown the step back two won't go. Offensive rebound to Brandon Johns. Banging his way to the rim. Left hand rolls it home. These are great minutes for Brandon Johns Jr. Not a lot of pressure on him because they're up comfortably. And he can start to expand his game a little bit. 18-0 run, and it continues with the rejection from Bogner. Lob inside, Dickinson fouled by Sam Freeman, and that will take us to the under eight media timeout. Under eight minutes on the clock, eight points scored in the second half for Minnesota. 
take a look at tonight's auto owners insurance game leaders. Hunter Dickinson, two points from tying his career high. Isaiah Livers with a nice night, 14 points, six rebounds. Really everything coming up Michigan tonight. They're on an 18-0 run over the last four and a half minutes. They've outscored Minnesota 37-8 in the second half and are running and hiding 69-34. And this was something we talked about at the beginning of the broadcast, Stephen Bardo. The home road splits have been decidedly lopsided in favor of Minnesota at home. On the road, though, they played Illinois, Wisconsin, and now Michigan. It's not been an easy slate away from home, but they have really struggled to get anything going when they have left the barn. Yeah, and what happens, that's why we kept referencing during the first half that they've got to stay close to get into the halftime break and come out with a little bit of momentum. But what happened is Michigan understands the first five minutes of the second half is critical, and they punched Minnesota, and the Gophers didn't. They never responded. Dickinson ties his career high with those two free throws. Eight rebounds to go with the 26 points. The young man with the basketball, Booth Gotch, may be the most disappointed of all the Gophers tonight. He has not done much at all. Foul on Brandon Johns Jr. And Johnson will go to the line for a pair. So when you're Booth Gotch, you're 0 of 2 from the field. But you're an active 6'6 guy. Get on the glass. Make some deflections. Guard your man. Do something besides score. Tomorrow on the Big Ten Network, Ayo Dosumu leads the Illini to Evanston for a clash with the Wildcats. Big Ten basketball presented by Rocket Mortgage tomorrow at 9 Eastern on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. That free throw by Brandon Johnson broke a 20 to nothing run for Michigan as Robbins is being tended to by the athletic training staff on the Minnesota sideline. Well, hopefully that's not serious. Like he was get, get me a little bit. May have caught a, a knee to the side of his thigh. Let's definitely hope it's not serious. Trapper in the corner. That's good. And the first two tonight for Zeb Jackson. Be careful in this scenario, Kevin, because you know if you can you continue to be down this much if you're Minnesota, this could bleed into your next game. You know, their next game is at Iowa. <laughs> I mean, you know, you talked about it. That uh, you know, Iowa's not gonna come in and feel sorry for you because you you know you beat Iowa at the barn in overtime, so it's uh, it doesn't get any easier. And then you go right back and play Michigan once more as Carl go to the rim and that layup goes in. It would have counted anyway. Shondi Brown called for the goaltend. Carr with two more on his docket. That's 12. A little action at the rim and then right there. Looked like he, Robbins on the right, may have bumped into Zip Jackson there. The back cut to Livers. Ball tipped away and taken away by Minnesota. Carr in transition. The three well short. Offensive rebound to Freeman. Nice recovery by Mike Smith defensively. Ruth Gotch had to get rid of it. Three on the shot clock. Scott, deep three. No good. Rebound loose. Gotch gets it. And Gotch, the pull-up jumper falls. And there's the first two tonight for Booth Gotch. So these are the type of things that, you know, even though you have a tough game, if you can get a couple to fall towards the end, at least you feel okay about yourself. But if you don't get those in this juncture with a 30-point spread, that can carry over. Dickinson back to work. 
Dickinson with a double team coming. Ball pops right into the hands of Brandon Johns Jr. He's given Michigan some real nice minutes tonight, Stephen. I agree, and I think he's going to be key to this team moving forward because you can't expect Hunter Dickinson to go without being in foul trouble at some juncture of the season. And so you, Michigan's going to get tested, and the way that Johns is playing right now, there won't be much of a drop-off. Alsher at the foul line, strong. Freeman has it, and a foul is going to be called. Looks like Livers may have reached in, picked up his first. Well, you talk about the e top echelon of the Big Ten. I think a message has been sent tonight. There was a lot of people around the country that were questioning whether Michigan was legitimate. I think they put all those questions to bed here this evening. The questions came because Michigan's wins in conference were against Penn State, Nebraska, Maryland, and Northwestern. Now, I think you and I would agree Northwestern of those teams, a very solid basketball team. They've certainly shown it this year, but this was a step up in competition, and Michigan really making a statement on both ends of the floor tonight, offense and defense, against the number 16 team in the land. I agree, and I think they sh they showed tonight they may be one of the most balanced teams in all of college basketball. What a feat from Mike Smith and Hunter Dickinson with a career-high 28 points on the beautiful dime from number 12. It looked like Shawnee Brown Carl thought there was going to be short. a timeout. I think so, too. Yeah, he, he acted like it was. The ball fake couldn't get the shot to go for Brandon Johnson, and here comes Michigan. And there's the timeout. Well, when it's, when it's going good, it's going real good. And look at that pass to three defenders. Mike Smith setting up his big fella for a new career high. You 77-45, second straight home game that Michigan has cleared the bench with just four under four to go and the strength on the court this season is not limited to the men's basketball program at Michigan the women's basketball program off to a 7 and 0 start the best start tied for it in program history and the only remaining division one school Stephen with both teams undefeated Michigan basketball is in very, very good shape right now on both the men's and women's fronts. Oh, totally agree. You know, you're looking at programs like Baylor. You know, the men's side is undefeated, but the women are obviously are not. So it's a unique year for the Wolverines on the basketball side. <laughs> Jawan doing his best impression of a referee. You know what, Kevin, I want to get this in real quick. Jawan Howard's had a very difficult week. Guy that is really his brother, Donnie Kirksey, was laid to rest due to COVID complications. So uh, rest in peace, Donnie. We'll miss you. Well said, Stephen. And Jawan Howard fighting through the emotions of that loss and leading his team to a Really impressive performance tonight on their home floor. Trying to bounce it inside. It's in there for Folds, and now back out it goes. The three on the wing. That is good for Martis Mitchell off the bench for Minnesota. Again, the game is well in hand, but these minutes are important. It's a long Big Ten stretch. You need to develop depth. And these guys, they need to find some rhythm. On both sides. Adrian Nunez off the mark there. Trey Williams on the attack. And Williams with two. Now as he look forward. We mentioned Minnesota and Iowa. But each and every night in the Big Ten, there's different challenges based on the matchup. So, you know, we look at a Maryland team that's 
struggling to find some consistency that goes into Wisconsin. And you and I, Kevin, were on the call for that one. That was an outstanding victory. And you look at what Iowa did at Rutgers after losing McCaffrey in the first half. They go on and, and win at Rutgers. And then, lo and behold, people thought Michigan State was going to stay down forever. But obviously, they don't know Tom Izzo very well. And they responded in a big fashion in their victory over Rutgers. And, and one interesting thing, and you, you pointed this out earlier today on Twitter, and you look at Ken Palm, who does a great job of sorting all these statistics. And in a very weird year in college basketball, really a weird year in the, in the world, home court advantage hasn't meant much. But in the Big Ten, home court, for whatever reason, still means a lot. Home teams, after this win tonight by Michigan, will be 24-9 and nine in conference play, which at this point is actually a little bit better winning percentage than it was last year. That is not the case when you look around the country. Home teams in the ACC are 11-9. and nine. Home teams in the Big 12 are 6-12. and 12. But in the Big Ten, when you're on your home floor, you still seem to have an advantage as Michigan battling for that loose ball and Terrence Williams will go to the free throw line. Isn't that fascinating, Kevin? That is a great statistic. And again, it goes to show the depth and the, the toughness of the Big Ten Conference night in, night out. No, no knock to any other conferences. That's not what we're saying. But with, when you bring up that stat, that is indicative of the travel going into a different venue and trying to beat these teams that are so good in their home venue. Williams with one more, 80 points for Michigan. And they have been putting points up in big, big bunches this year. 83 points per game for the Wolverines on this season. And a two for Jamal Mashburn Jr. I like watching Michigan him play. About to go to 10 and 0. I like that. He's, gonna, he's going to be somebody. Bank open late in Ann Arbor for Adrian Nunez. See Nunez smiling a little bit. He knows he's going to hear it from his teammates. with the foul. Sixth team foul, so Minnesota will inbound with 101 to play. Well, I want our viewers to tune in to Illinois Northwestern. I've been, I've been privy to a bunch of those games, and it didn't matter whether Illinois was ranked or Northwestern was ranked or Sean Morris was playing. It was always a tough game between the Illini and the Wildcats. Steven, it always mattered if Sean Morris was playing. Always. <laughs> this is true. With the left hand, that'll pinball out. The rebound swatted out by Williams. Open three, short. Long rebound again to Zeb Jackson. He'll feed it inside. Howard has it rejected. And Mashburn on the run with 20 seconds to go. The pull up two, no good. And the long rebound out of bounds. Minnesota will have one more shot at it down 82-57. Minnesota fall to 10-3 and 3-3 and and in league play, while Michigan will move to 5-0 in conference play and 10-0 and on this college basketball season. Yet another impressive performance by the Wolverines. They're sending notice around the country, Kevin. 82-57. Absolute dominance. This was a six-point game at halftime, and it ends up an 82-57 win for Michigan. These two teams will meet again next Saturday at the barn where the Gophers will be looking 
for a better outcome. But tonight it was all Michigan at home. That'll do it from Chrysler Center, where the Wolverines knock off the Gophers 82 to 57. Coming up on Big Ten Network, it's Big Ten Live basketball postgame presented by Speedway. For Stephen Bardo and our entire crew, I'm Kevin Kugler saying so long from Ann Arbor, Michigan.